The protests and demands for racial justice in the United States remain a theme at the Republican National Convention. First Lady Melania Trump is addressing months of upheaval for the first time and used her primetime speech last night to make an appeal for unity. I also ask people to stop the violence and looting being done in the name of justice and never make assumptions based on the color of a person's skin. Instead of tearing things down, tearing things down let's reflect on our mistakes. Melania Trump, the final speaker of the evening at an event meant to boost Donald Trump's re-election campaign hopes. So perhaps unsurprisingly, her remarks focused on her husband with the U.S. president watching from a front row seat in the Rose Garden. Megan Fitzpatrick was watching closely. Megan, Melania Trump does not seek the spotlight. She's rarely taken the spotlight on the national stage during the past years of her husband's presidency. So you were listening closely. What were the big themes that emerged from her keynote address? Well, one of them, Heather, was what she was saying right at the beginning of her speech when she started talking about the COVID-19 pandemic. And she expressed sympathy to people who have lost loved ones. She said she's offering her prayers to those who are sick. She said she knows people are anxious. She told them they're not alone uh, and that her husband would keep fighting uh, and won't rest until he is taking care uh, of those in need during, during the pandemic. Uh, it should be noted, uh, as you said, she gave that address in front of a live audience, unlike other speakers, speeches at the convention because of the pandemic. The people there seated a little bit apart, but not quite six feet and not many people wearing masks. The Democrats, of course, accused President Donald Trump of mishandling the pandemic and failing to protect people's lives. We haven't heard a lot yet at the Republican convention uh, along the same lines as the tone Melania was, uh, Trump was using last night in terms of expressing sympathies uh, to those who have been affected. So that was one of the standout moments. The other one was when she addressed the racial unrest in the United States and you heard her comments there. She also touched on a number of other topics, including mental health and addiction. She talked about what she would do with four more years in the White House, uh, what causes she would want to focus on. She also said near the end of her remarks, she didn't want to use her time for this big speech. As you mentioned, she doesn't give a lot of these often. She didn't want to spend her time attacking Joe Biden and the Democrats. She said that would only lead to further division. And rather, she wanted to focus on making the case for her husband and why he deserves a second term. Take a listen to a little bit of that. I'm here because we need my husband to be our president and commander in chief for four more years. He is what is best for our country. We all know Donald Trump makes no secrets about how he feels about things. Total honesty is what we as citizens deserve from our president, whether you like it or not. You always know what he's thinking. She also made uh, some remarks directly to mothers, Heather, and parents, other parents, she said, uh, calling them warriors. Uh, but that was part of her theme and her tone to the Trump campaign, hoping that the First Lady can help bridge what is a bit of a gap in terms of support from suburban women for President Trump. They'll need that support to help him win in November. So very much the target, her job to make the case to female voters, potentially, as you say, Megan, make or break demographic for him in November. What were some of the other key moments and messages from night two? Well, one of the other, uh, one of the controversial speeches last night came from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And it wasn't controversial because of what he said, Heather, but where he said it. It was a pre-recorded message that was taped from Jerusalem where he is on official state business. And questions are being raised about him not just breaking protocol with this speech, but potentially the law. Uh, state Department officials are not supposed to engage in partisan political activities while on the job. A House committee on Capitol Hill now investigating this. It wasn't the only moment last night uh, where questions are being prompted about the use of the White House and the presidential office. Uh, there was also a pardoning ceremony uh, taped at the White House that was aired last night, as well as a citizenship ceremony uh, where five new Americans were sworn in. Uh, that was another unusual moment last night. Other themes uh, last night 
included that appeal to women uh, voters for sure. There was a video that was aired highlighting all the high profile women who work in the White House, including President Trump's daughter, Ivanka. There was also an appeal to the religious base of the party as well. And that in part came from uh, a speaker who used to work in an abortion clinic. And it also came from Sissy Graham, who's the granddaughter of the well-known uh, Christian evangelist, Billy Graham. Take a listen to what she was saying about uh, the religious uh, religious people being under attack, she claimed, from Democrats. The Biden-Harris vision for America leaves no room for people of faith. Whether you're a baker, a florist, or a football coach, they will force the choice between being obedient to God or to Caesar, because the radical left's God is government power. We also heard from two more of President Trump's children last night. The night before that, it was Donald Trump Jr. Last night, we heard from Eric Trump and Tiffany Trump. They didn't tell too many personal stories about their dad, uh, but rather, again, we're, we're talking about his record, what he has done for Americans over the last couple of years in his first term. And again, like Melania Trump, making the case for why he deserves a second, uh, a second term in the White House, Heather. Melania Trump, her big moment at the Republican National Convention, it was all about delivering a crucial message for her husband's re-election chances, that women can feel good about voting for him. Women, especially those who live in well-off suburbs, are seen as a potentially decisive constituency in the presidential race. The U.S. First Lady had last night's keynote address. She spoke live in the Rose Garden and capped a night of messaging meant to give voters a different view of Trump, portraying him as a forceful leader, but not a force for political division. She also pushed back at Democrats' criticism over Trump's handling of the pandemic, offering her own condolences to people who have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. I know many people are anxious and some feel helpless. I want you to know you are not alone. My husband's administration will not stop fighting until there is an effective treatment or vaccine available to everyone. There, part of Melania Trump's keynote. We're going to want to talk more about it in just a moment with Alex Vogel, who's with us this morning, a Republican strategist, a former RNC deputy counsel. He's in Upperville, Virginia this morning. And Alex, thanks for being a guest on our program. Thanks for having me. I do want to talk about Melania Trump's address specifically in just a second, but I should get your overall thoughts. What was your big takeaway from night two? Uh, I thought they did a very nice job. Um, there are obviously unique challenges associated with a virtual convention, uh, especially one that had to be put together, uh, relatively speaking, at the last minute. Uh, and I think uh, they're doing a very good job getting their message across. The messaging from Melania Trump, let's turn to that in her keynote address. We just heard part, but she struck overall a different tone from many of the speakers we've heard, and she offered a very different portrayal of the president. Let's listen to a little bit more. We all know Donald Trump makes no secrets about how he feels about things. Total honesty is what we as citizens deserve from our president. Whether you like it or not, you always know what he's thinking. No matter the amount of negative or false media headlines or attacks from the other side, Donald Trump has not and will not lose focus on you. So there you go. Uh, part of it, an interesting speech all together as we look at the totality. But as she made her case for her husband's second term with that different tone, what do you think? How effective was she at broadening his appeal? I, I think she was effective. She clearly was focused um, on empathy uh, and reaching out in much uh, softer ways than uh, either the president on his own behalf or uh, other members of the Trump family. Uh, there's always a unique role for spouses um, of candidates in this process. Uh, and I thought she did a very good job, especially in light of some of the expectations that were built around her speech, given what happened four years ago when her speech at the convention led to a bunch of controversy. So I actually thought she hit the right tones was the contrast between her 
uh, and uh, the president's normal style, which I think people are obviously used to, uh, was was very dramatic. Uh, and uh, I think she did a good job reaching out, um, A, just expressing that sense of empathy and sympathy and acknowledging some of the challenges that are going on in the country right now. Uh, that was very powerful and I think well delivered. She actually spoke directly to American mothers. And again, as I was saying in introducing you, this is a key demographic for the president in his re-election campaign to convince suburban women perhaps that they can vote for him again. So can you just explain to us as a strategist why that's so important to gather the women's vote? It, 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 look, there, it's a... It, it's a challenging voting block for this president. He has been, from a polling perspective, underwater uh, with particularly suburban women who have historically been core supporters uh, and uh, bases of electoral support for Republican presidents. Um, that started to fade uh, and then hit new lows with this president. Uh, and I think they recognize that, the campaign does. They wanna make sure that their message, not just the overall message on the, the, uh, the economics and everything else, reach those voters, uh, but they also recognize the need for a messenger, mm -hmm. uh, in this case, Mrs. Trump, um, who is uniquely uh, able to speak to them in ways, frankly, that the president uh, can't or won't. So her job, as we've said, to broaden his appeal, to attract undecided voters, swing voters, swing them back. Something that Republicans have been critical of, at least from the start of the convention, is the fact that there's not a lot of policy. There's not a lot of vision. There's a whole lot of Donald Trump, but there's no sense of what the next four years or a second term will hold. And there's a lot of discussion about how that's needed, too, to bring back swing voters to, to the fold. Again, as a strategist, is that a missed, missed opportunity? Or, or do you want to even, do you think you need to see more vision, more substance here? No, I think it's a little different when you were the incumbent. Um, when you were the challenger, it's very important usually for you to explain from a policy perspective what you're going to do that's going to be uh, transformative or fundamentally different. Um, part of this is a response to the Democratic Convention uh, and their messaging, which right now is we don't like Donald Trump. We want you not to like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is bad, uh, and uh, that does not lend itself to uh, terribly in-depth policy debates. And so instead, um, uh, having listened to a few days of the Democrats trash the president, um, a part of the job of the Trump campaign and the RNC is to, to give voters another reason to support him and to push back on some of that. So I don't think ultimately uh, conventions are terribly well suited uh, for broad-based policy conversations, uh, especially with an incumbent president. You tend to have a lot of four more years, uh, and are you better off now uh, than you were four years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that level of policy discourse is likely where things are going to stay for the next two nights. And perhaps right on through until November the 3rd. Look ahead to night three, if you would, along uh, on the agenda, some of the biggest names. Kellyanne Conway, who's just announced she's going to be stepping down from her role in the White House. And then Vice President Mike Pence. Where do they fit in tonight? What's their job? A couple of things. Uh, this night of the convention is historically uh, the, the vice president's night. Um, uh, there's there's a, a usual cadence and rhythm that builds to the ultimate speech on the last night by the president, in this case, usually the whoever the nominee is. Um, that's been th thrown out a little bit. Uh, as the president has obviously made appearances every night. Uh, but this is an opportunity uh, for, for the vice president to speak to some of the issues. I think you probably got uh, a preview yesterday when they showed some clips of uh, the vice president in Indiana at, at uh, President Lincoln's boyhood home. Um, uh, and again, the contrast with some of the more combative speeches, um, I think you're going to see a very measured, quiet, sympathetic um, uh, Mike Pence, who's trying to show that the administration is in touch with real people and real concerns. Uh, Kellyanne is unique in this regard. She's probably uh, the longest serving uh, aide to the president, um, uh, obviously with him since the campaign uh, and was instrumental in turning that around. Uh, it, much like Melania, one of the things that Kellyanne 
uh, is very good at and wants to do uh, is communicate to women uh, about the role of women in the campaign and why she believes the policies the president is pursuing are good for women in America. Um, that being said, Kellyanne, if you've seen her on television at all in the last three years, uh, not exactly afraid of pushing back on those who criticize the president. And I think you will definitely see some of that red meat uh, in her presentation as well this evening.